psychopathy and sociopathy are two neurological conditions labeled as forms of antisocial personality disorder, a mental illness characterized by constant antisocial behavior. Although often referred to synonymously, the conditions share a number of differences in both origin and manifestation. Psychopathy is present from birth and is accompanied by a number of physiological abnormalities such as a significantly smaller amygdala. Even so, a psychopath's behavior is deeply affected by its childhood and nurturing. Psychopathy's characteristic traits fully manifest in children, yet subtly. Sociopathy is the result of a child being raised in a very hostile environment. As a defense mechanism, the brain of the child autonomously damages its neural connections, leaving the child unable to properly experience pro-social emotions. Psychopathy and sociopathy have highly similar traits. These include a complete lack of guilt, empathy, mercy and fear, a highly reduced emotiveness which can be interpreted as emotional coldness, an inability to develop emotional attachments, superficial charm, high pain tolerance and an inability to feel love, sadness, stress or to experience depression, an inability to link memories to their sense of scent, extreme rationality, egotistical behavior and an immunity to the majority of mental illnesses. Sociopaths have been known to have a higher degree of emotiveness than psychopaths and can manifest most emotions in certain circumstances as well as form emotional attachments to people or objects on rare occasions. Sociopaths are predisposed to extreme surges of anger when under the influence of a psychological trigger, an unpredictable allusion to the trauma that activated the sociopathy. This makes sociopaths volatile and thus much more dangerous. People affected by sociopathy also have a higher predisposition towards narcissistic behavior and substance abuse. A long history, the meaning of these two terms has changed significantly and even at this point in time an extreme amount of confusion surrounds them. Psychopaths and sociopaths are not evil and they are not crazy, they are simply different as a result of their emotional coldness. The terms of psychopathy and sociopathy have received an undeserved negative connotation mostly as a result of countless misinterpretations in media, especially in the field of cinematography. Because of this, psychopaths and sociopaths have been forced to hide and don social masks in order to integrate into society. Movies portray psychopaths and sociopaths only as murderers and criminal masterminds, although this is highly unreflective of reality. This video aims to diffuse the misconceptions towards the two conditions by exploring how two films inaccurately portray a psychopath and a sociopath and by comparing those with two interviews of a suspected real-life psychopath and sociopath. A serial killer and a cannibal, Hannibal Lecter is one of the most iconic characters in fiction. Hannibal Lecter was born into a noble family and is noted to have behaved normally as a child. After he was orphaned and thus traumatized during the Second World War, Hannibal Lecter became a murderer and a cannibal. Although his behavior is psychopathic in nature, his origin story fits more with sociopathy. An individual cannot be both under any circumstances. This proves the scientific inaccuracy of the character. The following scenes display Lecter's behavior as shown in the movie The Silence of the Lambs. That expires in one week. You're not real FBI, are you? I'm still in training at the academy. Jack Crawford sent a trainee to me. Yes, I'm a student. I'm here to learn from you. Maybe you can decide for yourself whether or not I'm qualified enough to do that. Mm -hmm. That is rather slippery of you, Agent Starling. Sit, please. After watching the scene, you will have noticed how rarely Hannibal blinks. A low rate of blinking is typical to psychopathy. The deep, penetrating gaze Hannibal manifests is known as the predatory stare. Hannibal immediately notices the expiry date on the trainee's ID. A psychopath's rationality can lead to high observance and deduction skills. Lecter is offended when he realizes a trainee has been sent to him. A hint of anger is present in his voice. This is something that a psychopath would never do. Now then, tell me, what did Miggs say to you? Multiple Miggs in the next cell. He hissed at you. What did he say? Lecter speaks rhythmically, almost as a robot would do. 
his lack of tonality is specific to an unmasked psychopath. Richard Kuklinski, known as the Iceman, was a professional hitman that killed over 200 people during his 30 year career. While he operated as a hitman, he had a wife and two children who were unaware of his true profession. After being arrested, Richard was diagnosed with antisocial personality disorder, but due to the limitations of brain scans at the time of his arrest, it could not be decided whether he was a psychopath or a sociopath, even when his behavior indicated a higher degree of psychopathy and of sociopathy. The following scenes are taken from interviews following his incarceration. I walked away. What'd you do when you got home? I put toys together for the kids for Christmas. How'd you feel? I was annoyed I couldn't get the damn wagon together. After a murder, Richard's greatest annoyance is that he couldn't get his children's toys together for Christmas. He feels no remorse or guilt towards his crime. Did you have a favorite place you'd like to shoot? A favorite? Yeah. Shot a guy one time in his uh, Adam's apple. See how long it would take him to die. How long did it take? A few minutes. He drowned, actually. He didn't. Drowned in his blood? Mm hmm. I was with somebody else. We had a $50 bet. I lost. Richard's indifference towards death is shown in his act of setting a bet based on how long his victim would die after being shot in his Adam's apple. Richard's speech is articulate and his long pauses before speech indicate that he is careful about his choice of words. This means that he is not fully unmasked and conforms to social convention during speech. In the movie Seven, John Doe commits a number of crimes aimed at people that are guilty of the biblical seven deadly sins. His murders often shame the victim or turn their own sin against themselves, indicating that John Doe is capable of sensibility and is emotionally implicated in his crimes, no matter how superficially. Just backstory indicates that he went through extreme abuse as a child. His behavior and past are both indicative of sociopathy. I thought all you did was kill innocent people. Innocent? Is that supposed to be funny? An obese man? A disgusting man who could barely stand up? A man who, if you saw him on the street, you'd point him out to your friends so that they could join you in mocking him? A man who, if you saw him while you were eating, you wouldn't be able to finish your meal? And after him, I picked the lawyer, and you both must have secretly been thanking me for that one. This is a man who dedicated his life to making money by lying with every breath that he could muster to keeping murderers and rapists on the streets. Murderers. A woman. Murderers, John, like a yourself. A woman. So ugly on the inside that she couldn't bear to go on living if she couldn't be beautiful on the outside. A, a drug dealer, a, a drug dealing pederast, actually. And let's not forget the disease spreading whore. Only in a world this shitty. Could you even try to say these were innocent people and keep a straight face? John's speech is riddled with anger. Even so, he makes a compelling point for his motivations. Faced with the prospect of his capture, his rationality remains unaffected. We see a deadly sin on every street corner, in every home, and we tolerate it. We tolerate it because it's common. It's, it's trivial. We tolerate it morning, noon, and night. Well, not anymore. I'm setting the example. And what I've done is going to be puzzled over and studied and followed. John speaks highly articulately. He believes that his actions have a higher importance, almost divine in nature, and assumes that his murders will be studied and discussed for years in the future. This is a clear indicator of narcissism, an exaggeration of one's ego and importance. A serial killer, commonly labeled as a psychopath after his arrest, Tommy Lynn Sells instead manifests a highly sociopathic behavior with bipolar and psychotic overtones. The television program from which I've extracted the following scenes has the title The Mind of a Psychopath. This kind of scientifically inaccurate program is one of the underlying reasons as to why people have such a negative view on psychopathy and sociopathy. The first time I did a shot of dope, 
It was the best feeling I ever had in my life. And the first time I killed somebody, it was such a rush. And it was just like that shot of dope. Every time I did it, it was that rush again. And I started chasing that high. Tommy's confessions reveal a history of strong drug abuse. Tommy killed for pleasure, and this served as a substitute for his drug use. Only a sociopath could find pleasure in killing. Tommy even describes developing something akin to an addiction for killing, which would never happen to a psychopath. How many people have you killed? Lord, I don't know. I, I don't know. Ten? Yeah. Twenty? Probably. Thirty? It's up there. Fifty? But see, I'm not Billy the Kid making notches on, on my, my holster, so I know it's been a lot. Tommy is unaware of his number of killings and is offended when the interviewer confronts him about this, almost as if bragging about having killed more people than proved. The constant raising of the number of victims elicits no real reaction from Tommy. Sells blames much of his murderous rage on sexual abuse he says he suffered as a child. You also killed children. I some get killed, yes. Now, why would that happen? I didn't want him to live through the pain I lived through. Tommy describes his murderous behavior as a result of childhood trauma. This effectively proves his position on the sociopathic spectrum. The psychopaths and sociopaths that have been presented to you in this video are not representative of psychopathy and sociopathy, not in any way. What has been presented to you represents a minority of a minority. In reality, very few people affected by psychopathy and sociopathy are criminals. Most crimes are committed by neurotypicals, people just like you and me, with no apparent conditions. It is estimated that psychopathy is present in 1% of the population and sociopathy in 4%. The majority of psychopaths and sociopaths are functioning in our society. They live among us, disguised under a mask of normalcy. Very few of them fit into the stereotypes set by the film industry. What this means is that 5% of the world's population is forced to fabricate its every bit of self, just so it is not subject to undeserved discrimination. Think about this. You have to be conscious about everything that you do, every breath you take, every word that you speak. Do you think that you could be at peace? Do you think that you could be happy? High-functioning psychopaths and sociopaths are exactly the polar opposite of what they are presented as. They are people that, through their lack of emotivity, can fully control what little emotions they have. They represent the pinnacle of self-control. Most of us would agree that that's a positive attribute to have in life, a full control over our emotions. I think most of us would like to have that. To live a life without ever feeling depression, anxiety or sadness, and yet still being able to feel joy. If anything, I think you should admire those people and try to learn something from them. I do not believe that they deserve this negative connotation which is unintentionally projected towards them. Of course, you have the sociopathic and psychopathic individuals that cannot control their urges and are low functioning. But the percentage of these individuals is so minimalistic that it is almost not worth taking into account. The goal of this project has been to raise awareness about the reality of this matter, but in the end it may not matter much. There are very little manifestations that speak truly and scientifically accurately about this topic. This video is one of the very few. And the truth is that until the people of the world are ready to accept psychopaths and sociopaths as people, they will remain hidden. Hidden so effectively that not even experts of the field can identify them with ease. They are our teachers, our doctors, our neighbors, our friends, and maybe even our family. The statistic makes it wholly possible for all of us to have met multiple psychopaths and sociopaths during our lives.